Good morning, it's Tanya coming to you from the Firefly Berries Kitchen where this morning we are making my dad's favorite, and I know a lot of your favorites, strawberry jam. Now you may not be able to come out to Firefly Berries this year to pick your own strawberries, but we encourage you to order online and do curbside pickup and then go home and have a special afternoon or evening or morning with your family making strawberry jam or some other yummy strawberry dessert. Step one before we even start mashing strawberries or measuring sugar is I turn on the dishwasher, which I've already done. I'll show you here. And I put my jars in there, my mason jars, not the lids or the rings, just the glass jars. And I have turned it on for a sanitized load. And that will make sure that my glass jars are all sanitized and ready to go for making jam. We used to make our jam with the traditional low sugar sure gel and we would just follow the recipe on the box. There's a little pamphlet inside. However, this last year we have changed our recipe to use something more natural instead of the um, man-made dextrose as a sweetener that is found in the sure gel. So now we use uh, Pomona's Universal Pectin. You can get it at most I think Hy-Vee has it around the Rochester area. You can get it at health food stores. Uh, we purchase ours in bulk, as we do so many things, online at Amazon. And you can get a large amount. So if you're going to do a lot of jam making, that's something to think about. So anyway, you get your little pack of pectin. The thing about the natural pectin is that it's a little trickier than using the sure gel because the recipe is really a lot up to your personal preference. So for us, um, inside you're gonna find a little pamphlet that will give you suggestions. Suggestions for how much fruit to how much sugar. Now of course, for us, we, we use the least amount of sugar we possibly can use while still keeping the flavor of the jam sweet enough to be considered jam. So we want that flavor of the fruit to really come through. Part of the natural pectin is that you have to create something called calcium water. And it comes with a little packet inside of calcium water, or not calcium water, calcium powder. And you have to take, in order to, to make the water, you take one half teaspoon of this. And you put it in a jar with a half a cup of water. Now you don't use this all for one, oops, that's kind of loud, sorry about that. You don't use this all for one batch, so you can save your calcium powder. So when you're looking at, uh, then you shake it up. So I'm going to shake it while I talk. When you're looking at the cost of the natural pectin, it seems like it's a lot more than, say, the sure gel box. But when you buy the sure gel box, you use the entire box for one batch. For this, I can get two to three batches out of one box because I don't use as much pectin. Again, just like the sugar, the pectin is there's a suggested amount. If you like your jam or jelly more firmly set, you're going to use more pectin in it. Or if you like it not as firm, you'll use less pectin in it. So each fruit has a certain amount of pectin in it and different fruits have different levels. A fruit that has a more uh, higher concentration of natural pectin will require less of this pectin. Now, so I've shaken my calcium water. Now this is what's gonna help the natural pectin to activate, to set, all right? I don't know the exact science behind it. I know the general science behind it. So you have this ready. You can set that aside. If you don't use it all and you want to make more in the future, another batch of jam, you can put that in the refrigerator and it stays for a very long time. Okay, we have our calcium water ready and I just measured my sugar. For strawberry, we like to use six cups of mashed berries. I have not mashed these yet, but six cups of mashed berries to two cups of sugar. We use organic cane sugar. The recipes in the um, pamphlet for natural pectin also mention that you can use honey. We found the texture changes a little bit and we don't really like it for selling purposes. 
but if you don't mind that, you can certainly use honey as a sweetener as well. I've put my six cups of mashed strawberries in my jar, in my uh, pot along with the one tablespoon of calcium water that we prepared earlier. Then I have my two cups of sugar in here and I added into that, you can kind of see the difference, a tablespoon of pectin. Now when you add your pectin in, make sure that you mix it up thoroughly because if it's not mixed up, it will clump once you put it into your hot strawberry mixture. So I just turned my burner on high. We cook our jam on high, full heat, constantly stirring it. This brings it to a boil quicker and it also helps the pectin to set better. And if it matters, we like to use a wooden spoon. You can see this one's been used a lot. It's been stained with grapes and strawberries and all kinds. What you're watching for is for the uh, strawberry mixture to come to a uh, boil. So it'll be bubbling and boiling even while you're stirring it. Then you're going to add in the sugar mixture and you're going to let it go back up to that same bubble, that same boil while you're stirring. Wait one minute at a full boil and then take it off the heat. I'm going to need a couple tools and you'll need a couple tools for making your jam as well. This is, I don't know exactly what it's called, but a jamming funnel. You'll need um, a little, it has a magnet on the end that helps you to get the lids on without um, burning yourself. So you'll need one of those and then you will need, but you'll need one of these guys to actually grab the cans and pull them in and out of the hot water bath. So make sure you have those on hand. I'm going to start to fill it up and you do want to make sure that um, the funnel and then also you'll need some sort of spoon to help you like a ladle to help you ladle in and out and if you have, have forgotten to put that in your sanitized dishwasher load no worries you can simply dip that into the boiling hot water because that will sanitize it as well So now we need to get some hot water. I take it directly from the boiling hot water. We need just a little bit to put our lids in to heat them up so that they will seal properly when we put them on the jars. So I'm sticking my jars in. You put the um, silver side up because that's the part that will, you'll be using your magnet to take them out. So go ahead and stick those in the hot boiling water. And then you're just gonna make sure they get completely wet. Take them out and without touching the inside of the lid, you wanna put them on each, each jar. And then the last step that we have to do before we stick our jars into our hot water bath is to put the lids on. I said that wrong, not the lids on, put the rings on. We just put the lids on, so now we're gonna tighten each ring on there to make sure it's tight so none of our good strawberry goodness comes off and into our boiling water. We're going to take our jars and we're going to get them into our boiling hot water bath. And just very carefully, make sure when you take your cover off you let the steam escape because if you don't, you're going to really get a nasty steam burn from that. Making jam is not hard, but it does involve a lot of hot boiling sauces and liquids that could um, cause injury if you're not careful. So there are all sorts of sizes of these pots that you can get. We got ours at 
Food Farm. I can't remember what size it is. I will look it up and I will put it down below what we use, but we can fit comfortably. We can fit eight half pint jars in ours. Um, if you want something bigger or smaller, there's lots of options. They just all have to be in there with at least one inch of water above them. So now we have them in the hot water bath. They're gonna sit in. Okay, so we are going to boil them for 15 minutes um, in the bath. So I'm gonna set my timer. The recipe that comes with the natural pectin says 10 minutes, but we live a little bit higher than sea level, so we add on five extra minutes. So now we wait. Okay, you can see our jam is now out of the hot water bath, and you will notice that the strawberries and the liquid are nicely mixed in each of the jars. If you start to notice as they start to cool that the chunks of strawberries separate from the more liquidy part, you can simply just pick it up and shake it a little bit, and then that will help it redistribute and set. The reason it does that is if your chunks of strawberries are too large, they will float in the liquid mixture. So you might have just heard, hopefully you did, that little pop noise. That is what you want to hear. That is the seal that tells you that your jam is now tightly airtight, sealed, and will not grow mold or anything unhealthy. As it cools, it will, it will seal tightly. If it doesn't, make sure you make note of that and put that in the refrigerator and eat that one first because it will stay just fine for one to two weeks in the fridge, even if it isn't sealed. But if it has sealed, you can keep it in your pantry up to two weeks. But thank you for coming along to learn how to make strawberry jam. I hope you and your loved ones find some time to make some yummy strawberry goodness together soon. Thank you, bye-bye.